So before I begin, and you know, I've been allocated 50 minutes. Honestly, I expect to use every minute because um, there, you know, in reviewing the year, the past year, there are so many things that I want to talk about, celebrate. I want to acknowledge many, many people. Uh, and But before I get to that, I do want to give a brief update, just use this opportunity to give a brief update and maybe a clarification about the governor's announcement on Monday and uh, where we are right now with regard to our return to campus um, planning. So the governor's announcement was unclear, and I want to clarify for everyone, um, it applies only to state employees at four-year New Jersey public colleges and universities. So uh, it wasn't clear that that was the case. The governor's vaccination mandate specifically at this moment does not apply to county colleges. We are not state employees. Uh, so it's only state employees at four-year public colleges and universities. A recap of several important items. Um, based upon robust, robust survey results uh, from employees who were surveyed and students, 90 to 95 percent of our students and employees report that they're fully vaccinated. About 90% of students, 94%, I think, of employees at this moment. We're incentivizing students who are not yet vaccinated by sending them $100 if they provide documentation of full vaccination status. And to date, over 2,000 students have provided this documentation, and, then, and these roll in every day. Uh, so we're seeing more and more evidence of student vaccinations we're urging unvaccinated students to study and obtain services remotely and online in the fall. And we've been adding remote and online seats and course sections to be sure we can accommodate everyone. Uh, better yet, we're urging students to become fully vaccinated. But if they can't be, we offer a robust, um, extensive selection of courses, both remotely and online. We are going to again partner with the North Hudson Community Action Corporation to offer booster vaccinations on both campuses this fall. So uh, beginning sometime in the fall, uh, you need to get the booster eight months after the second vaccine. So at that milestone moment, they'll be on campus to make it easy for everyone to get boosters. Uh, we have continued to encourage employees who have personal extenuating circumstances to speak uh, confidentially with their supervisors who in turn are asked to consult their cabinet leaders, and we're exercising maximum flexibility to accommodate the unique concerns of employees as we have from the very beginning of the pandemic. We've, of course, returned to full masking indoors for everyone following the guidance of the CDC, which is our anchor in, in all decision making, but also the recommendation of the Health and Safety Committee of the Return to Campus Task Force. We are monitoring changing circumstances daily, and need I say hourly, truthfully. In the past week or so, three of our sister community colleges have now made the decision to require students, faculty, and staff to be fully vaccinated. That requirement is in effect now at Essex. It will uh, be in effect at Morris in October, and Raritan Valley is asking everyone to be vaccinated by next January. Other community colleges are considering this. Um, I, am, I attend a weekly meeting on Monday afternoons of the 18 community college presidents. So I'm asking our RTC task force to consider whether we should also make this decision following the governor's advice, even though it technically doesn't apply to us. Um, we're also gonna be monitoring decisions made for Hudson County employees. Uh, we also are not technically county employees, but we value and often follow the county's recommendations. The NJEA and AFT are also on record in support of MAC mandating vaccinations. So we haven't made this decision. Uh, and if we make it, we'll allow enough advance notice and continue to do whatever we can to facilitate everyone becoming fully vaccinated. We would, of course, also consider protocols for those requesting exceptions due to personal health issues, spiritual considerations, and other reasons. Uh, so this is something that we're looking at the possibility of doing. I want to emphasize we haven't made the decision yet to, to require vaccines, and we're very heartened by the fact that it, um, the vast majority of all of our community members are fully vaccinated right now. I believe we're ahead of almost everyone else based on what I hear. Um, 
But I also wanted you to know that, um, that we are considering it. I want you to be aware of that. Um, we, can, we value all feedback, so we will value your perspectives as we consider this, the possibility of making this next decision. Uh, our RTC task force will keep everyone informed. Uh, there's going to be a session this afternoon, I know, to talk about RTC issues. For those of you that would like to attend that, I thank so many of you who are involved in this work. I'm looking at Kathleen Smith Wenning who's, and Dr. Sirhan Abdullah, Kathy Sarangelo. They've been providing expert guidance uh, as members of the Health and Safety Committee of the RTC Task Force, and we have followed every recommendation and will continue to follow every recommendation they make. So having said that, just wanted to use the opportunity to to share all that, and I really do welcome your feedback. But now I want to get into the remarks, if I may. Um, it really is a great pleasure and honor to welcome you and join you this morning to take stock of the tremendous challenges we faced and navigated together to celebrate so many successes and outcomes and to look forward to the coming year. Today, we begin a new academic year, and we begin to discover and define our emerging new normal following the protracted challenges and devastation of the twin pandemics over the past year and a half. And by twin pandemics, I mean the COVID-19 pandemic, but I also mean, equally important, the racial and social violence and injustice pandemic. The combination of those two have been exponentially devastating, as we all know. We've been through so much together, and I've been inspired every day every single day by the caring, selfless, and often heroic acts of kindness by so many students, faculty, and staff coming together to support one another through adversity. We've never lost sight of our overarching goals and our guiding principles throughout the pandemic of safety and student success. In spite of the challenges we've navigated together, we've continued to build our culture of care that was a priority before the pandemic and remains a top priori priority for all of us going forward. Last spring, we launched our Hudson Helps Resource Center, an umbrella of support services for our students and a beautiful manifestation of our shared commitment to student success and to, to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we are so honored today to welcome our morning speaker, Dr. Sarah Goldrick Robb. Dr. Goldrick Robb's leadership of the Hope Center at Temple University has inspired so much that we're doing at Hudson County Community College. We thank Dr. Goldrick Robb for her national leadership around issues of student needs, including food insecurity, housing insecurity, homelessness, and very importantly, equity. Colleagues, working as one community in more ways than ever, we've stayed on top of constantly changing dynamics over the past year and throughout the unprecedented challenges of the past 18 months. Today, we're together again. This is the first time we have been together, albeit our new normal, which I think is this, and I think it works. I hope it's working for all of you out there. Um, we're together for the first time using our new state-of-the-art immersive telepresence video or ITV technology that's so exceedingly important to our new normal and to our future. The theme of our conference today is post-pandemic excellence, which captures precisely our focus as we embark upon the new academic year. I want to thank all who planned today's activities. I'm going to be thanking a lot of people, okay? Uh, and I'm going to miss people. That's the, that's the downside. It's impossible not to miss people. And uh, let me see at the outset, if I miss you, please know how grateful we are for your contributions as well. But I want to, uh, in terms of putting this uh, schedule together today, I want to thank Director of Faculty and Staff Development, Lalisa Williams, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Daryl Jones, our CIO, Patricia Clay, Director of Communications, Jennifer Christopher, Custodial Manager, Julio Maldonado, their team members, and all members of the College Service Day Planning Com uh, Committee. We also thank Dr. Pamela Bandiopadier, Dr. Peter Cronrath, Sharon Daughtry, Robert Tafina, Aicha Edwards, uh, Fidelis Fotokahu, Diana Galvez, Andrea Goodwin, Linda Guastini, Zakia Mamu, uh, Sammy Kuzim, Desiree McFarland, Ken Maluski, Alexa Munoz, Candace Peterson, Dr. Paula Roberson, uh, Mariel Shinnick, Willie Shire, John Argola, Michael Welpley, and Omar Williams. And for those I've missed, again, thank you also. To all involved, we extend our sincere gratitude. 
As I shared in the opening letter of my recent annual report to the Board of Trustees, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. This introduction to Charles Dickens' classic 1859 historical novel, A Tale of Two Cities, aptly describes our shared experiences during the past year and beyond. Again this year, in spite of and in part because of the myriad challenges of two pandemics, we've realized unprecedented positive outcomes in support of our college's mission, vision, and values. Thanks to the HCCC family's enduring commitment to our students, community, and justice for all, the 2020-21 academic year has been marked by significant and meaningful progress in areas of institutional priority. These priorities center on student success and diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thanks to our inspirational HCCC Village, thanks to each and every one of you, we celebrate many achievements over the past year, a number of which represent national best practices. And I mean that, uh, as I'll try to demonstrate. Together, we've achieved a host of notable outcomes while surrounded by these unprecedented cha challenges. So let me name some. Our HCCC Dream Team members, including over 100 faculty, staff, and students working on committees and teams, have led the college community in efforts to achieve specific goals and objectives of our student success action plan. And we've begun to observe measurable outcomes of this work. For example, our three-year graduation rate has increased by 25% since 2018. It has ticked up each year. The percentage of first-time, full-time ESL students exiting ESL in their first academic year increased from 13% to 24% since 2017. The percentage of academic foundations math students exiting foundations coursework in their first academic year increased from 65% to 77% for the fall 2020 cohort. In, in spring 2021, 75% of students at HCCC earned a GPA of at least 2.0. This is the second highest percentage in the past five years. And the percentage of students earning zero credits decreased from 14% last fall to 11% this spring. Supporting this work are many successful and creative initiatives, such as the continued development and expansion of the highly successful Student Success Academy, led so capably by Associate Dean Dr. Pamela Pandiopadie, Director of the Writing and Tutoring Center, Kenny Fabera, and their colleagues. Many in our community participated in the improved and expanded use of multiple measures in lieu of placement testing by adjusting required GPA thresholds, SAT scores, and high school equivalency assessments. And our preliminary trial of new directed self-placement processes helped remove barriers imposed by the pandemic and provided us experience and insight into the pot potential continued use and improvement of this option for students where appropriate. Also important and highly valued were efforts to increase enrollment in learning community courses during 2021, in spite of the pandemic and the continued growth and development as well of the HCCC Honors Program. These grew while enrollment was declining due to the pandemic. We thank Professor and newly appointed Executive Director of the North Hudson Campus, Joe Coniglia, and Associate Director for the Honors Program, Kyle Woolley, respectively, for their leadership. We thank college lecturer Michael Welpley and colleagues across the college for their continued leadership and support in promoting and expanding the use of open educational resources, or OER, including virtual instructional materials in order to save students textbook costs. As we all know, as our students know all too well, the growing cost of textbooks and educational materials is an increasingly significant financial challenge and barrier that delays or prevents many students from completing their degree programs. It's that important. During the 2021, I don't know how to say that, 2020-21 academic year, all college student success course sections were offered textbook free. I know there's a section, there's a session today on OER that Michael is leading. Uh, so I, I also want to thank Vice President for Academic uh, Affairs, Dr. Daryl Jones, for his leadership of a collaborative working group of approximately 10 faculty and staff representing the divisions of academic and student affairs to research best practices and determine the viability of offering on-ground courses in seven-week formats starting in spring 2022. We thank Assistant Professor Denise Rossulli, who conducted a pilot to assess the effectiveness of seven-week courses. Survey results demonstrated that students had favorable opinions of condensed courses. 
and the working group has identified a robust and diverse offering of seven-week courses across disciplines for spring 2022. I also thank, and I can't thank her enough, we were talking earlier, Dr. Heather DeVries and colleagues in the divisions of academic and student affairs for developing outreach and recruitment strategies for adults in Hudson County and beyond who have earned some college credits but have not yet earned a degree. These are important initiatives and outcomes that re represent hard work of students, faculty, and staff across the college. In May, we celebrated the achievements of our graduating students with a virtual commencement ceremony featuring commencement speaker and award-winning author Wes Moore. I believe, by the way, he's running for governor of Maryland. And uh, valedictorian Pedro Moranchal. Uh, during the following week, we celebrated graduates and their families at eight two-hour grad walks held inside and outside of the Culinary Conference Center. Over 5,000 individuals watched the virtual commencement ceremony, and over 1,700 students and family members participated in the grad walks, which were live streamed to the college's Facebook page and viewed by over 4,000 people from around the world. Very importantly, we celebrated 31 early college students who graduated high school in May in Hudson County with, an, with at the same time, an HCCC associate degree. We thank Assistant Dean of Student Life and Leadership, Veronica Gerasimo, who continues to be a marvel. I don't know how she does it all. Veronica, you're phenomenal. We thank her. We thank colleagues across the college for arranging and managing these really inspirational events. During the past year, and in spite of the challenges of the twin pandemics, we opened our HCCC Student Center, which is a new central hub for our students. This inviting student facility will support the involvement and engagement of students, the increased use of the Gabriel Library and services, and contribute to the achievement of the college's student success and completion goals. We'll be formally celebrating this milestone new facility later in September. And I gotta tell you, there have been many times over the past two years that we have plan to fully celebrate the opening of new, this center. This time we're doing it. Um, and there's, by the way, a wonderful eatery there called uh, Libby's Home Kitchen. Our President's Advisory Council on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion has continued to make significant progress in leading and supporting our college-wide commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion in all forms. In collaboration with staff in the Office of Student Life and Leadership, the Office of Human Resources, staff uh, at the North Hudson campus, and many others, President's Advisory Council on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion developed and offered hundreds of programs during the past year. These programs promoted DEI-related professional development, community engagement, remembrances and celebrations, mutual respect and support, and opportunities for open dialogue. We thank North Hudson Campus Associate Director Amala Ogburn, Assistant Director Diana Galvez, Associate Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Natalia Vasquez Bodkin, Programming Co Coordinator Javia Hall, Assistant Dean Veronica Gerasimo, and other members of PAC Day for developing the new HCCC Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Student Passport Program. The program is a cohort based program. It allows students to participate in a range of DEI workshops with founda foundational topics that include unconscious bias, microaggressions, and privilege. With the strong support of our Board of Trustees, we created a new cabinet-level position reporting to the President to lead, support, and sustain Hudson County Community College's diversity, equity, and inclusion goals, initiatives, and outcomes. And on July 1st, our valued colleague, Eurus Pujols, became the college's inaugural Vice President for DEI, and we opened a new Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion on the sixth floor of the Gabriel Library. And Eurus, we value your leadership. During the past year, two important committees of community representatives and leaders were established and have become engaged in supporting the college's DEI goals. The HCCC Latino Advisory Council and the HCCC African American Outreach Committee are promoting the increased educational attainment of members of the Hudson County Latino and African American communities, respectively. Director of DEI for Cultural Affairs, Michelle Vitale, in collaboration with PAC Day and faculty, staff, and students across the college and throughout our community, offered multiple virtual exhibits during 2020-21, many of which supported and celebrated diversity, equity, and inclusion. These included free virtual programs to create an atmosphere 
that's opening and welcoming to people of all ages, including a lot of school children. And our Office of Student Life and Leadership, student organizations, and others offered a wide array of outstanding and well-received virtual cultural programs. These included a myriad of events during Hispanic Heritage Month, Black History Month, Women's History Month, Arab American Heritage Month, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, LGBTQ programming, including safe zone training, and other collaborations with the Hudson Pride Center, and many others. New opportunities continue to be developed to celebrate students, such as the Lavender graduation, Kente graduation, and Alpha Sigma Lambda, the new adult student honor society. Pac Day also offered a multitude of programs, such as the Our Stories Untold series, the Barbershop series, Want to Talk About It series, Same Same Different series, memorial celebrations related to the passing of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Congressman and civil rights icon John Lewis, remembrance events and discussions pertaining to the murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Americans of Asian descent and other murders, tragedies and acts of violence, a first Holocaust Remembrance Day that will be an annual event going forward and I thank uh, Alana Winslow, I also thank Eric Harakashian and others who are expanding that tradition going forward. And um, we had a college-wide discussion of the Derek Chauvin verdict and so many others. We thank Amala Ogburn, Natalia Vasquez-Bodkin, Kyle Woolley, Veronica Gerasimo, Angela Tuzzo, Juris Pujols, Elisa Williams, Anna Kropitsky, Alana Winslow, Dr. Paula Roberson, and so many others for their leadership in developing and offering these and other programs. Meanwhile, our foundation art collection continued to grow during 2020-21. Thanks in large measure to collection curator, Dr. Andrea Siegel. In what was a donation record-breaking year, 15 donors gifted Hudson County Community College 460 works and over 820 fine arts, books, and catalogs, many of which reflect DEI themes. Our foundation art collection now contains over 1,600 original works and it is such a wonderful legacy left by uh, Dr. Gabert uh, in his 25 years of leadership that was his project, that was one of his many projects, but one that I know is dear to his heart, and it continues to live and grow in the lives of all of us. In addition, during the past year, 1,930 decorative posters were donated for offices and non-public areas, which I think is great. Over 160 diverse works were installed in campus facilities over the past year, including, very importantly, student art that pervades the new student center. If you haven't had a chance to go look, it's all through the Student Center, it's absolutely beautiful. Members of the HCCC family offered and were provided a host of professional development opportunities during the past year. Dr. Paula Roberson, director of the Center for Teaching, Learning and Innovation, led and coordinated workshops on a multitude of topics such as multicultural education and equity pedagogies, utilizing support services to boost student performance, leveling the playing field through universal design, how to make teaching more inclusive, stackable credentials as a pathway to student success, open pedagogy and open educational resources, and facilitating student feedback, among many others. Dr. Roberson also coordinated and facilitated a summer book read of Stamped from the Beginning by Ibram Kendi. Uh, the book read sessions were well attended by HCCC community members and colleagues from seven other New Jersey community colleges and New Jersey Council of County Colleges staff. Paula, thank you so much for your leadership. The Center for Teaching, Learning, and Innovation continued its successful partnership as well with the Association of College and University Educators, or AQ, to offer professional development for full and part-time faculty and staff. And we're so proud of those who have completed that one or more of those programs and who are, again, going to be involved this fall. Vice President Anna Kropitsky and Director of Faculty and Staff Development, Lalisa Williams, supported by all staff in our Office of Human Resources, offered a myriad of professional development activities in collaboration with every department and division at the college. These included professional development workshops, conferences, in-service days, weekly and monthly events, related college-wide activities such as College Service Day, Convocation, the annual Adjunct Faculty Conference, our employee participation in the National Institute for Staff and Organizational Development, International Conference on Teaching and Leadership Excellence. This year, that was available to every employee who wanted to attend any or all of those sessions. Uh, also, we offered an inaugural professional development day involving faculty and staff across the college 
last spring. Workshops on performance management, faculty recruitment, ITV and WebEx trainings, DEI benefits, and many others were offered this year. Increased college funding was provided to a growing number of our faculty and staff colleagues, a number of you here, who are pursuing advanced credentials and engage and who are engaging in a wide range of professional development activities, including, including a growing number of professional presentations at national conferences and virtual, web, virtual webinars, among others. During the past year, 85 full-time employees and five adjunct instructors benefited from the college's professional development reimbursement funding to defray expenses associated with their enrollments in programs leading to advanced credential attainment. We're really, really proud of that. We have so many folks here working on master's degrees, doctoral degrees, bachelor degrees, and we want to support that work. So we thank so many colleagues for their leadership and participation in professional development. Promoting the professional development of faculty, staff, and students is a college-wide priority, and it's a specific priority in our new 2021-24 college strategic plan. We're happy to continue our work with Evergreen Solutions that will help us create an equity-embedded employee classification system. This system will help identify and correct internal salary equity gaps over time, facilitate greater consistency in titles and pay, and improve our ability to recruit and retain employees in the long term. We thank Vice President Kropitsky and members of her team who are working closely with Evergreen to lead and support this very important project. Our colleagues in the offices of Accessibility Services, Safety and Security, Facilities, Hudson Helps Resource Center, and others have led the development and improvement of policies, procedures, outreach services, and facilities to better serve members of our college community with needed supports and the removal of physical and other barriers to ensure equity and the success of all students, faculty, and staff. Under the leadership of Director of DEI for Accessibility Services, Jackie Safant, we've continued to develop and enhance accessibility support services, outreach, and accommodations through our growing Office of Accessibility Services. And we've continued to develop the Hudson Helps Resource Center throughout the past year and officially opened the one-stop location for the center's services last April. And these services include our food pantries at both North Hudson and Journal Square, a new clothing closet funded by Lord Abbott and Company, social work graduate interns from NYU and Rutgers, Department of Family Services representatives, mental health support services, emergency funding assistance for students, child care assistance for students, faculty, and staff, SNAP benefits, application assistance, single stop and one-on-one -on -one financial counseling, funded through our $850,000 corporate grant from J.P. Morgan Chase and more. And as we all know, over 1,100 Chromebooks and 50 hotspots were provided through the food pantries to assist students with inadequate access to technology over the past year. We're delighted to have retained Catherine Morales to be the inaugural full-time director of our Hudson Helps Resource Center. Is Catherine in the room? There she is. Welcome, Catherine. We're so happy to have you here. Uh, Catherine officially joined the HCC family last month. We're so happy to have you. During the past year, our culinary club students under the direction of Chef Puck and other students and faculty in the HCCC culinary arts program engaged in an ongoing project to prepare, prepare fresh meals for Hudson County Community College community members through the Journal Square and North Hudson Campus food pantries. With the installation of refrigeration and freezers at both locations, faculty and students in the Business, Culinary Arts, and Hospitality Management Division donated delicious and nutritional frozen meals for individuals and families. Meals were prepared several times every week throughout the past year, after which they were transported immediately to the food pantries on the same day they were prepared. And since July of 2020, over 5,500 meals have been prepared and distributed through the HCCC food pantries to students, their families, and others in need. Dr. Kay is here. All of our colleagues, this is, this, is what, this is what families do. And through our partnership with the North Hudson Community Action Corporation, COVID-19 vaccinations were provided to students, faculty, staff, and community members for many months at our North Hudson campus and later at our Journal Square campus. The North Hudson Community Action Corporation, our partner, to date has uh, administered, I believe I'm correct in saying, over 50,000 vaccinations. 
Uh, and most of them, I believe a majority of them, were administered at the North Hudson campus to lots and lots of community members and lots of us, myself included. We're now planning to offer booster vaccines, as I mentioned, on campus later in the fall. I want to thank Executive Director of Public Safety and Security, Jack Quigley, our colleagues at the North Hudson Community Action Corporation, and many others for their leadership and support of these efforts. Our information technology services and other colleagues have developed and installed state-of-the-art technology throughout our facilities to support student success goals and improve access to our programs and services for those who are not currently served by the college. These include significantly enhanced broadcast capabilities in classrooms such as the uh, immersive telepresence video that we are using today, or ITV, hybrid technology and WebEx boards, the expansion of virtual desktop infrastructure for graphic intensive applications, the implementation of single stop technology to assist students in a wide range of areas of need in the Hudson Helps Resource Center and others. And I want to specifically thank Diana Perez, academic lab manager, and her team, including academic lab coordinator, Paola Valcarcel, senior lab assistant, uh, Kelly Garay, and uh, their team of lab assistants. These dedicated colleagues provided direct support to our faculty and students in over 125 remote and on-ground classes and conducted regular ITV training sessions. Thank you. During the past year, 45 new ITV instructional and meeting facilities were developed on the Journal Square and North Hudson campuses in order to share courses and enhance participation in meetings on both campuses. Again, we're doing that today. The new ITV technology has enabled the launch of nine additional full program offerings at the North Hudson campus, which now uh, include 19 programs that students can complete fully at North Hudson. Our technology and support of the college's mission has become nationally distinctive. I don't know if all of us are aware of this. It's nationally distinctive uh, as a result of these significant improvements throughout the pandemic and beyond. All told, since the beginning of the pandemic, we have invested to date, and this number is growing, $10 million in technology. Uh, we have start, we started this work before the pandemic. The pandemic really excelled the work and this is an investment in our new normal and in how we will be able to thrive uh, in the future, combining what we've done traditionally on ground with new technology that really provides access to so many more. So I do want to take this opportunity to do a shout out and thank CIO Patricia Clay. Uh, these are heroes. Interim, the interim director of the Center for Online Learning, Dr. Robert Kahn, uh, their colleagues, and so many others. Thank you for your leadership and support. Our colleagues in the Office of Grants, the HCCC Foundation, our academic division, student affairs and enrollment and beyond, secured record external funding in support of student success during the past year of challenge. These include grants and gifts to support STEM and ESL instruction, food pantries, apprenticeship programs, student services, Hudson Helps, emergency funding for students, including DACA and um, uh, students, uh, international students, DEI, and many others. Uh, thanks to the leadership of our colleagues in the Office of Financial Aid and Beyond, we've realized significant improvements in student financial aid outcomes during the 2020-21 academic year. These include a 37% reduction in the number of students needing to apply for student loans and a reduction of over $1 million in student loan indebtedness. And further, the number of Community College Opportunity Grant financial aid awards increased last year by 10% while our enrollment was declining. So, by the way, it's picking up again. During 2021, 87% 0.4% of Hudson County Community College students received some form of financial aid, including 4,620 Pell recipients receiving more than $17 million in Pell funding. Hudson County Community College proudly leads New Jersey's 18 community colleges in the proportion of students eligible for and receiving Pell, TAG, and CCOG grant funding. Hence, the governor came here to sign the legislation permanentizing CCOG. And a total of $27.7 million in financial assistance from all sources was awarded to 5,874 HCCC students during the past year. We're going to have a quiz after all of this. 
For the second consecutive year, our board of trustees, I hope some are watching, I, I'm almost certain Trustee Gardner is, our board approved a freeze in tuition and fee increases to support our students for the second consecutive year. And recently, we erased every dollar of students' funding balances since the start of the pandemic in spring 2020. Nearly $5 million in funding balance forgiveness was provided through federal stimulus funding to over 4,800 Hudson County Community College students. This got national press, and it should. Uh, in fact, our, our Achieving the Dream coaches sent me a note a day or two ago saying, you realize you helped inspire this because now this is happening across the country and we were one of the first. Not that we have to be in competition, right? Uh, with this support, thousands of these students whose loan, whose balances have now been, been forgiven are enrolling or will enroll in fall and spring courses this year, uh, something that might not have been possible otherwise. I thank, from the bottom of my heart, colleagues in our business and finance division, including Veronica Zeitner, Jeff Sims, Sharon Wilson, and Leslie Lang, for their conscientious administration of HERF and other stimulus funding throughout the past year and beyond. Our colleagues in the Division of Continuing Education and Workforce Development, led by Associate Vice President Lori Margolin, developed and refined a plethora of programs and services to support the economic and workforce needs of our region, including significant needs and challenges related to the pandemic. These initiatives, and I'm looking at Lori, uh, we did a podcast yesterday. It went way over because there was too much to talk about. These initiatives resulted in the past year in a 70% increase in continuing education enrollment. 70% increase, all our enrollments declining college-wide as it is across the country. Uh, this generated a record of $1.7 million in gross revenue, and very importantly, nearly $700,000 in net revenue this past year. Uh, and that money is fully supporting our students and our academic mission. So Lori, I often say to her and her colleagues, they're really, in a lot of ways, the entrepreneurial arm of this institution. They're paving pathways that didn't exist before. They're developing partnerships. They're making a difference in the lives. You'd be surprised how many thousand students uh, are taking courses here in non-credit and, and workforce development, many of whom are then now, with our support, navigating to credit instruction. But they're also, for the first time, generating net revenue. It's always been a cost center. Uh, when I got here, we were, we were spending money but, and not complaining about it for continuing ed. Now it's generating net revenue. Lori, congratulations. Under Lori's leadership, the college is offering the Gateway to Innovation Project, which is supported by our $850,000 corporate grant from the JP Morgan Foundation. The project's helping community members, many of whom experienced devastation during the pandemic, develop skills leading to jobs that pay family sustaining wages. The project is also helping expand access to benefits for students, support alumni by connecting them to jobs and training and align degree programs with in-demand skills in the tech and finance career pathways. During the past year, continuing education and workforce development students were asked, this is a statistic that I I think is especially meaningful. They were asked to take a nationally normed survey of student satisfaction developed by the Ruffalo Noel Levitz organization. This survey instruments considered the national standard for benchmarking student satisfaction in higher education. The national average of community college student satisfaction, which is using the rating satisfied or very satisfied, nationwide the, the, the average is 65%. Our students reported a 95% satisfied or very satisfied rating. And that's up from 89% a year earlier. Our colleagues at the Center for Online Learning, working collaboratively with and supporting our academic and other teams, offered unprecedented services and programs to our entire college community during the past year and beyond. During the past academic year, three additional fully online programs were developed bringing the total number of fully online programs to nine, with three additional fully online programs, two or three, uh, expected to be added in 2022. And in addition, the Center for Online Learning team, in partnership with faculty and staff colleagues across the college, developed 14 new online courses last year, bringing the total number of courses now offered 
by HCCC online to over 100. We're working closely with the newly formed Hudson County Department of Housing and Community Integration, led by Frank Mazza, and the New Jersey Reentry Corporation, led by former New Jersey Governor James McGreevy, to offer virtual courses and programs in the Hudson County Correctional Facility and on ground courses and programs at the new Reentry Training and Employment Center in Kearney beginning this fall. A new task force chaired by Dr. Heather DeVries and Lori Margolin is coordinating both of these initiatives, working with Director Mazza, Governor McGreevy, their colleagues, our college leadership, faculty, staff, students, and others to consider all the possibilities and plan early approaches to education for individuals who are or were justice involved. Beginning this fall, the college will offer non-credit and credit on-ground classes and workforce training programs in the Reentry Training and Employment Center where we will be the primary educational provider going forward. We'll also deliver virtual non-credit and credit degree and workforce training programs to approximately uh, 55 inmates at the Hudson County Correctional Facility beginning this fall, and over half of them are already registered. We're committed to growing and further developing these instructional programs and outreach services over time. We've all benefited so greatly from the work of the Return to Campus Task Force, co-chaired by Lisa Doherty and Heather DeVries. Lisa and Heather have provided collaborative and inclusive leadership for a cross-functional team of approximately 35 faculty, staff, and students that's met weekly during the past year and throughout the pandemic. The RTC Task Force developed our restart plan that included extensive protocol services, communication, and other considerations to ensure the safety of our community and the continued success of our students to the fullest extent possible. During the past year, our entire college community was engaged also in the development of our new 2021-24 strategic plan. We thank Dean of Academic Affairs and Assessment, Dr. Heather DeVries, Executive Director of Institutional Research and Planning, John Scanlon, a core planning team of 45 students, faculty, staff, and community representatives, strategic planning consultant, Dr. Jim Davey, trustees, foundation directors, and others in the development of our new plan. The plan contains five strategic directions that are aligned with Board of Trustee goals, the Academic Master Plan, Student Success Action Plan, and PAC Day goals and action plan. The nearly final college-wide strategic plan will be completed and submitted to the Board of Trustees for their approval next month. We also celebrate the completion of the comprehensive redesign of the HCCC website and the launch of the new site following two years of extensive work across the college. The beautiful new site was launched in early May 2021, and refinements and further development of the site continue. This, too, is the work of the entire college, but I want to especially do a shout out to Lisa Doherty, Jen Christopher, Omar Williams, Christopher Fontanez, Tricia Clay, and their colleagues for their extraordinary leadership and dedication. You know, most institutions have trouble implementing a new website in the best of times. We did it in the worst of times, and it's beautiful. Over the past year, we completed a long process, and I hope she's watching, of recruiting a new vice president for advancement and communications to lead and support significant increases in external funding over time in order to promote excellence and sustain the college's operations. Nicole Johnson will officially join our HCCC family on September 20th, and we look forward to the leadership Nicole will bring to developing and securing new resources to support our students and the college's mission and sustain our progress in the long term. Meanwhile, this was a record year for gifts and grants in several respects. Thanks to the leadership of Lori Margolin, Dr. Nicholas Chevrolati, and others, we successfully cultivated and received the college's largest ever single corporate grant of $850,000 from J.P. Morgan Chase, as already mentioned. And we received over $6 million in the past year in grants, with mil millions more in grant requests that are now under review. Funders include state, federal, and private organizations and do not include federal or state stimulus. So I'm not talking about stimulus. That's another whole thing. That's a lot of money. We especially thank Sean Kerwick and Idea James in the grants office for their leadership and dedication. And we were awarded a record $1.25 million in Carl D. Perkins grant funding from the state of New Jersey, again representing the largest Perkins allocation of all New Jersey community colleges. This, as you know, supports our career and technical education programs and helps provide the truly state-of-the-art equipment at this institution. 
Thanks to the leadership of Assistant Professor Dr. Azar Mahmood, Associate Dean Dr. Burl Yearwood, our grant staff, our continuing education colleagues, and others, we received our first grant ever from the prestigious National Science Foundation, NSF, last spring. The $300,000 grant is the first ever to be awarded directly to HCCC. We've been involved in past consortium grants with actually led by sister institutions, but first one directly awarded to us. It's gonna support the continued growth and development of the new construction management program. And I think this is a harbinger of much more grant activity going forward. We're really seeing momentum. We're getting more faculty involved and really developing a new grants culture before our eyes. Recently, we received a $500,000 opportunity grant for safe and inclusive learning environments from the Office of the Secretary of Higher Education. This was spearheaded by Dr. Chris Conzen, Jenny Pu, and Natalia Vasquez-Bodkin with assistance from Sean Kerwick, Idea James, Iris Pujols, Anna Kropitsky, and others. And in spite of the twin pandemics, our early college programs continued to grow under the superior leadership of Dr. Christopher Conzen, Executive Director of the Sea Caucus Center and Early College Programs. Working with academic leaders and other faculty and staff colleagues, Dr. Conzen led the continued growth of our K through 20 educational pathways including curriculum mapping for Bayonne High School, Liberty Science High School, and Kearney High School. And the Division of Business, Culinary Arts, and Hospitality Management expanded its early college offerings to the West Orange School District and entered into discussions with four additional area school districts for new early college offerings. Fantastic. And, you know, I want to just mention uh, our culinary arts enrollment is increasing. It's up this fall. That's that ends a trend of downward enrollment. And it's because of a lot of hard work that Dr. K and others are doing. And I already mentioned, but it's worth mentioning again, 31 high school students graduated last May with their high school diplomas and our degree. Uh, this number is gonna continue to grow over time. Collectively, these outcomes are truly extraordinary. We've remained together as one community, as a family, to achieve these outcomes and support one another. And it's impossible for me to thank all of the thousands of faculty, staff, and students who deserve recognition for their dedicated and tireless efforts to support one another, but I'm not finished. Um, these include scores of faculty, staff, and students who've been working on ground throughout the pandemic, and all of us who are now beginning or continuing working on ground to support our students and our community in the fall. They include the many faculty, staff, and students who've worked long hours on our return to campus task force. They include colleagues on our all college council and our professional associations, our president's executive council, cabinet, our student government association, Phi Theta Kappa, and many other student organizations, our peer leaders, and so many others who came together to work far outside of their comfort zones to rise to the challenges, support our students, and serve our community. They include our trustees and foundation directors, who provided steadfast leadership, advocacy, and support in so many forms every step of the way. In addition to those already mentioned, there are several individuals and groups that I'd like to specifically thank for their extraordinary leadership and support. And again, please forgive me as there are so many whom time will not allow me to acknowledge, but who also are deserving of our deep and sincere thanks and gratitude. A few of these were mentioned already, but I wanna thank Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment, Lisa Doherty, and Dean of Academic Affairs and Assessment, Dr. Heather DeVries, who co-chaired our Return to Campus Task Force. This work, the work of these two people and the task force members, but Lisa and Heather particularly, that alone was a full-time job. I want you to know, I'm not exaggerating. That alone constituted a full-time job for the past 18 months. But guess what? They've been doing a lot of other things, as I've mentioned. Uh, Lisa and Heather led initiatives to establish, implement, and communicate our approach, planning, and deliverables throughout the pandemic in support of students, safety, and our culture of care. And they've led with unwavering dedication, transparency, and integrity. And we are really grateful to you, Heather and Lisa. I thank Associate Dean for Financial Aid, Sylvia Mendoza, such a superstar, and all members of her team who developed complex procedures for distributing CARES Act, Hudson Helps, and other funding to students in need throughout the pandemic and continuing through the coming year and beyond. I thank Dr. David Clark, June Barriere, Larry Anderson, Diana Galvez, Bernadette Barnes, and the ITS Help Desk team 
who worked at the food pantries and managed the deployment of food supplies and Chromebook distribution throughout the pandemic. I thank Vice President Veronica Zeitner and the accounting and finance team who implemented e-student refunds and direct deposits to provide faster student access to needed funding, maintaining seamless student account processes throughout the pandemic. I thank Dr. Sheila Dynan and Dr. Heather DeVries who've so capably shared our student success dream team, which has helped us keep a focus on student success throughout the pandemic and uh, beyond. I thank the many members of our dream team and our student success implementation teams who worked tirelessly to develop our student success action plan that charts our goals and defines our focus for achieving continuous improvement in student retention, completion, transfer, and gainful employment. The work is informed by the development and consideration of data and best practices nationwide and by our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion in all forms. I thank our dear former Executive Director for Online Learning, Archana Bandari, and Interim Director, Dr. Robert Kahn, CIO Tricia Clay and their colleagues in Information Technology Services, and all of their team members for their unrelenting dedication to substantive and comprehensive support for thousands of our community members in the areas of remote and online teaching, learning services, and new uses of technology. I thank former Dean of Libraries Jenny Poo and her team for their phenomenal work to expand access to library resources, deliver training and special programs, and support students in all their educational endeavors. I thank Executive Director of Engineering and Operations, Ilya Ashman, Custodial Manager, Julio Maldonado, Executive Director of Public Safety and Security, Jack Quigley, and their team members for their expert and conscientious efforts to ensure that our facilities and services are safe, organized, and maintained in an environment of constantly changing needs and circumstances. Truly heroic work. Thank you all. And I also thank members of our President's Advisory Council on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, led so capably by Vice President for DEI, Eurus Pujols, and co-chairs of uh, PAC Day, Lisa Williams, and now Director of the Educational Opportunity Fund, Jose Lowe, who succeeded Eurus as PAC Day co-chair. We thank these exceptional colleagues, all members of PAC Day, and others across the college for their inspirational leadership and daily efforts to support community members as we have observed and grieved new acts of murder, racial injustice, and intolerance in our community and our nation that continue the long cadence of such violence and injustice. I thank CARE team co-chairs Dr. David Clark and Assistant Professor Denise Rossulli and team members Joseph Coniglia, Jennifer Christopher, Dr. Chris Conzen, Lisa Doherty, Veronica Gerasimo, Anna Kropitsky, our new colleague Catherine Morales, Doreen Pontius, Juris Pujols, Jack Quigley, Jackie Safant, Kathleen Smith Wenning, and our social work graduate interns. These caring colleagues have met weekly to support our students and other community members in myriad ways during the time of unprecedented challenge. So anytime a care and concern form came forward, this committee of dedicated colleagues, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it here, came together immediately. To, to, to try to address the concerns, to try to support uh, students, and usually in very silent ways. Uh, uh, I, I am, on behalf of the whole college, deeply indebted to the work of this care team. I thank Lisa Doherty, Dr. Sheila Dynan, Matt Fessler, Sylvia Mendoza, Dr. David Clark, Veronica Gerasimo, Angela Tezzo, Jose Lowe, and so many others in student affairs and enrollment services for their steadfast, caring, and enduring support of our students, including prospective students all hours of the day. I thank Director of Communications Jennifer Christopher and her team for ensuring consistent messages to our college community and a positive presence in our social media outlets and other media throughout the past year and throughout the pandemic. I don't know about you, I don't think we've ever had so much positive press uh, at, a, at a difficult time, and it's hard work. And uh, Jen doesn't throw things at me, at least that I'm aware of, uh, as I'm in touch with her every day. She, she and the team are truly dedicated. I'd like to also take this opportunity, and this is very important, and I apologize that this is going so long, I'm getting to the end, but I wanna recognize and thank the officers and leaders of our all college council and our professional associations with whom my colleagues on the president's executive council and I work closely and collaboratively for the college community's welfare. We thank these colleagues, absolutely. 
We thank these colleagues for their leadership and support throughout the past year and throughout the pandemic and for their ongoing collaboration and contributions to our participatory governance processes. From the All College Council, we thank Chair Dr. Peter Cronrath, Vice Chair Sharon Daughtry, and Secretary Karen Galley. We also thank All College Council subcommittee chairs, including College Life Committee co-chairs, Jose Lowe and Kyle Woolley, Space and Facilities Committee co-chairs, Eric Adamson and Faiza Fayaz, Development and Planning Committee Chair, Shanine Caruana, Technology Committee Chair, Zheng Yang, and Student Affairs Committee Chair, Heather Connors. Elections for Chair and Co-Chair of the New Academic Senate will be held at the first meeting in September. We also thank, from the bottom of our heart, hearts, uh, ACC officers last year, uh, Lauren Drew, Angela Tuzzo, and Kathleen smith Wenning, for their superior, superior and dedicated service. From the HCCC Professional Association, we thank Michael Ferlis, Vice President Dorothy, his president, Vice President Dorothy Anderson, Treasurer Claudia Delgado, Corresponding Secretary Tony Acevedo, and Recording Secretary Dr. Sirhan Abdullah. Thank you. From the Academic Administrators Association, we thank President Jose Lowe, Vice President Christine Peterson, and Secretary Angela Tezzo. And yes. And from the Support Staff Federation, we thank President Dorothea Graham King, Vice President um, Patrick Del Piano, Treasurer Daisy Baeza, and Recording Secretary Hope Orantes. And from, yes, and thank you. And from the Adjunct Faculty Federation, we thank President Nancy Lazik, Vice President Kamara Raza, and Secretary Rafi Manjikian, who's now a full-time member of the faculty. And, you know, I have the honor and pleasure of meeting monthly uh, in five separate meetings uh, with these folks. And I, I just want to tell you, um, you don't see those, but, you know, these have been really opportunities of honor. I mean, we have been able to work together, but we have, there have been times, uh, some of you know what I mean, when we've really been uh, brutally honest with each other and expressed our frustration, but most of the time, all the time, we have worked together around a shared vision. We're all on the same boat rowing in the same direction, and we're doing it together, and that's as it should be. So value colleagues, thank you for your dedicated and caring leadership. I'd also like to recognize several of our student leaders, and I regret that I don't have enough time to thank everyone who deserves recognition. Our students are so inspirational. We thank HCCC peer leaders who are helping welcome all of our new students, Ahmed Abdelkader, Jay Singh, and Igor Serkin. We thank EOF peer leaders who supported our EOF summer program scholars, Marlene Andalia, Omar Law, Victoria Ferreira Silva, and Crystal Reed. Um, our, our Phi Theta Kappa Executive Board, President Rocco Angelo, Angelo Maristella, Vice President Angel Beebe, Vice President of, of Service, Walid Akir, Vice President of Scholarship, Jeffrey Levine, Vice President of Public Relations, Marlene Andalia, Vice President of Leadership, Iham Hyder, and Vice President of Fellowship, Christian Rodriguez. And we thank and so value Phi Theta Kappa Chapter Advisor, Professor Ted Lai, whose extraordinary leadership and support for our students. Ted, I, I said this to you earlier, I say it frequently, what you do is nothing short of life-changing and transformational. You have made such a difference in so many lives. And uh, he's, he's quiet around me. But I'll tell you what, he is dynamic in the work that he does. Ted, we really appreciate you. We also acknowledge and thank our 2021-22 Student Government Association Executive Board, President Angel Beebe, Director of Finances, Racco Maristella, Director of Record Keeping, Christian Rodriguez, Director of Interclub Council, Marlene Andalia, Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Yasmin Abdelaziz, Senators Ahmed Abdelkader and Jay Singh, and alumni advisors, Diana Gomez and Yasmin Nyan. Thank you. And we also thank all of our student employees, including work study students, our student academic coaches, tutors, and so many others. And very importantly, I also want to thank Dr. Sheila Dynan, Dr. David Clark, Veronica Gerasimo, Angela Tezzo, 
and all of their team members who support and mentor our students with superior dedication and excellence. They lead the finest student and academic support and student life and leadership programs I've observed in my 41 career year career in higher education. And I mean that sincerely. I also thank members of the cabinet with whom I work so closely to a person these colleagues have offered unceasing and selfless leadership and support over the past year throughout the pandemic and beyond. I thank Dr. Nicholas Chevrolati, Lisa Doherty, Dr. Daryl Jones, Anna Kropitsky, Jennifer Oakley, Uris Pujols, Veronica Zeitner, and soon, Nicole Johnson. And by the way, I'm really proud that our cabinet has been increasing in its diversity. Um, we now have four of our eight cabinet members who represent traditionally underrepresented groups, and we value that. In addition, I thank all members of the President's Executive Council and Marcella Williams and Alexa Riano. I gotta say again, Jen Oakley in my office, all of these folks who lead and support our community conscientiously and with the greatest caring and skill. Thank you, gifted colleagues, colleagues and so many others unmentioned who make our mission of life-changing and transformational opportunity possible. As I often say, it takes a village and our village remains united in its care, appreciation and support for all community members. I look forward to working with all of you in the coming year to serve our students and our community and to realize our collective vision and aspirations for Hudson County Community College. As we begin a new year together, new in so many ways, we continue our mission central work as a community and family that focuses on student success, on diversity, equity, and inclusion, or culture of care and other related priorities and values. Going forward, our work this year will include several interrelated priorities, considering lessons learned during the twin pandemics, including continued innovation in how we serve students and our college's mission, continuous improvement in the opportunities for online and remote learning, and the quality of the online experience, specifically informed by our collective experience since last March, March of 2020, remaining laser focused on our efforts to promote student success, guided by our work with achieving the dream in our student success action plan, including continuous improvement in how we address student needs, holistic supports, how we remove barriers to student retention, degree completion, transfer, and gainful employment, and how we address equity and student achievement gaps. Addressing our shared values and goals for reaching new levels of excellence in support of diversity, equity, and inclusion in all forms, informed by the new DEI action plan and the overarching goals developed by PACTAC, following their now two years of leadership and service in this area of institutional priority, and integrating and acting upon other vital planning over the past year, including our new mission, vision, and value statements. And by the way, the, the, the value statements use the acronym Hudson Cares and the new college strategic plan. As I begin my fourth year at Hudson County Community College, what continues to inspire me most is the commitment here everyone has to our students, everyone here. We have the honor of working in an institution that changes and transforms lives, and it's clear that our core, our, our core common value, what everyone here champions, is our students and their, wealth, their welfare. And in spite of the unprecedented challenges of the past year and beyond for our students, particularly the, the pervasive challenges of the pandemic coupled with racism, et cetera, the 2020-21 academic year was also a year of progress and significant outcomes for our students, thanks to everyone in our community. Over the past year, we celebrated nationally distinctive student faculty, staff, and trustee accomplishments and recognitions. We celebrated HCCC May graduates, Adam Alamine and Pedro Morinchel, for their transformative achievement of having been awarded 2021 Jack Ken Cook Foundation undergraduate transfer scholarships. Adam and Pedro are two of just 72 community college students from across the nation to have been selected as this year's Cook Scholars. This marks the third consecutive year in which HCCC students have been selected as Cook Scholars and the first time our college has had two students selected in the same year. And Professor Lai, we know what a central role you play in, in those successful outcomes. We further celebrated the selection of Pedro Morinchel as one of just eight students from across the United States to be named a 2021 Dream Scholar by Achieving the Dream. We celebrated a 9.4% increase in the overall graduation rate in the Division of Nursing and Health Sciences over the previous year with 248 graduates this year. We celebrated a 5% Educational Opportunity Fund student enrollment increase in fall 2020 and a 14% increase in spring 2021 in spite of the twin pandemics. 
we celebrated our Office of Human Resources who received the College and University Professional Association for Human Resources 2021 Eastern Region Excellence Award. Our human resources staff, by the way, donated their award honorarium of $1,000 to the Hudson Helps Resource Center Clothing Closet. We celebrated the New Jersey Pandemic Relief Fund sponsorship of Hudson County Community College to participate in a fully funded four-year program with the JED Foundation that will begin in fall 2021. JED is a nonprofit organization that seeks to protect emotional health and prevent suicide for our nation's teens and young adults. And we further celebrated the work of Associate Director of Mental Health and Wellness, Doreen Pontius, and our mental health counseling and wellness team members. Together, because of their heroic work, they achieved stigma-free campus commendation by the Hudson County Department of Health and Human Services and the Hudson County Board of Commissioners for our campus. We celebrated the Middle States Commission on Higher Education's invitation to Dr. Heather DeVries, Juris Pujols, and John Scanlon to offer a presentation in their spring 2021 Middle States webinar series. It was entitled Continuing a Momentum After Reaffirmation, a Case Study in Applying Change Management Principles, and it focused on student success and diversity, equity, and inclusion from the completion of our college's Middle States reaffirmation of accreditation in 2019 through adjoining Achieving the Dream, the development of PAC Day, and our current strategic planning process. And we celebrated the invitation of the College and University Professional Association to Anna Kropitsky, Yuris Pujols, and Elisa Williams to present Improving Engagement and Diversity by Promoting a Culture of Inclusivity at the Coupa HR Spring 2021 Conference. We celebrated the election of Hudson County Community College Trustee Pamela Gardner to represent the Northeastern United States on the Association of Community College Trustees Committee on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Congratulations and thanks for your leadership. Trustee Gardner. We celebrated the development of a national presentation on PAC Day that concluded the Association of Community College Trustees two-day virtual diversity institute offered in June of 2021. As a result of Trustee Gardner's sharing of our DEI model and initiatives with the ACCT Committee on DEI, ACCT President and CEO Dr. Noah Brown invited us to share the college's DEI model as a best practice nationally in the concluding session of this national convening. We congratulate and thank Trustee Gardner, Eurus Pujols, Eric Adamson, and alumni representative to the Board of Trustees, Coral Booth, who joined me in making this celebration. And we celebrate the upcoming presentation by Trustee Gardner, Eurus Amala Ogburn at ACCT's annual Leadership Congress in San Diego this October. They'll be discussing our DEI goals and initiatives. We also celebrated the first ever virtual foundation gala, virtual foundation gala, where our chefs and students prepared meals that were, de were delivered to those watching virtually. That gala, thinking outside the box, um, raised $150,000 for student scholarships last December. And it, organized by the foundation with the strong support and leadership of Dr. Nicholas Chevrolati and development assistant Mirta Sanchez and delivered by our Culinary Arts Institute, the gala, of course, honored our former um, cherished business, culinary arts, and hospitality management associate dean, Paul Dillon, who was on campus last week. And uh, ending where we started, we celebrate the selection of Nat Natalie Akel to become our inaugural student poet laureate. And we thank, again, Assistant Professor of English Eric Adamson for developing this new tradition. We also celebrated the selection of Hudson County Community College to receive the ACCT Northeast Region Equity Award in recognition of the college's leadership and excellence in the areas of DEI. The award will pre be presented to us at the October ACCT Leadership Congress in San Diego. We have a team of 11 going. Recently, this is new news, I had a long telephone conversation with Lenore Perlstein, who's publisher of Insight into Diversity the largest and probably most well-respected national diversity and inclusion publication and website in higher education. And Hudson County Community College has been selected to receive the Insight into Diversity 2021 Higher Education Excellence in Diversity or HEED Award. Thank you. This, in their own words, this award recognizes colleges and universities that demonstrate an outstanding commitment to diversity and inclusion. We're one of only 10 community colleges nationally to be recognized this year. During our conversation, Ms. Pearlstein Stein was very specific and congratulatory in her remarks about what we're doing here to promote and support diversity, equity, and inclusion. And uh, she noted that our receipt of this award 
will gain a significant national recognition and more importantly, be very helpful in future grant applications. There are many more outcomes we realize together and celebrate which time will not allow me to mention. In fact, I ran out of time a long time ago. But all of these accomplishments reflect the dedication and commitment of our entire community to excellent student success and diversity, equity, and inclusion, which are central to our mission. Very importantly, these accomplishments are focused on our shared Hudson County Community College values. At this college, every person matters. We celebrate every community member's contributions, which collectively lead to our mutual and shared success as one community. Community colleges are uniquely positioned to address many of the nation's highest priorities, challenges, and aspirations. We're a gateway to the American dream for the millions of students who join our communities, traverse our pathways, and realize transformative outcomes through their community college experience. It's particularly inspiring and fitting, I said this last year, but I, I have to say it again, that Hudson County Community College continues to thrive in the shadow of the Statue of Liberty. May she and we continue to bring light, inspiration, and caring to all of our people. And finally, let us remember the words of Nelson Mandela that are inscribed on the plaque at the entrance of our new student center. Education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. Colleagues and friends, I pledge to do everything I can as your president to support our collective efforts to continue to grow and excel as an institution that's committed to serving our students, our community, Hudson County, the surrounding region and beyond. I'm truly honored to have the opportunity to work side by side with all of you. And as we continue to strive for excellence during and beyond the pandemic, I look forward to our close knit work together in the coming year to support our students and our mission. Meanwhile, I look forward to continuing to celebrate our successes and work through our challenges as one extended and caring family. And indeed, Hudson is family. Hudson is home. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs>